Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got an assembly video for you with this little guy. This is the Spyderco Nilaka. It's an interesting little knife, and it's already very, very smooth and very, very centered. And, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. First off, though, a little noting. Uh, technically, disassembling this knife does void the Spyderco warranty. So that is something you gotta keep in mind uh, before you jump down this path on yourself, and if you screw it up, don't blame me. So speaking of screwing it up, this is actually a knife that I'm a little bit concerned about screwing it up for, um, because it's different, it's interesting, and Spydecos can occasionally be trip, uh, tricky to uh, fully disassemble. So I'm gonna be a little bit scaredy cat about this guy, and if things start going south, I'm gonna stop. Because frankly, it's not worth ruining a loner here. I do wanna thank my buddy Eric for sending this guy along. He's been trying to get this guy to me for a long time. I've been very busy, but I finally have been able to open it up and pick one of these guys up through him, and I appreciate it very much. So one thing I noticed immediately when I picked up this knife is that you don't actually see the pivot screw. The pivot screw is hidden under this G10. Is it G10? Yeah, it's G10 here. And so indeed, there we go. And this has got some kind of a yellowish gunk underneath there. Oh, this needs my help in a very, very real way. But that's okay, I'm thrilled to be able to do it. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's continue the disassembly. I'm hoping that we don't actually need to go into the other side here, that we don't need to pop the other side off. But let's take a look-see here. Is this a T8? That may be a T9 or 10. Uh, let's see, T9. Always use as big a Torx driver as you can. Yeah, nine's better. Beautiful. Whoop, oh, yeah, that went. Nicely assembled knife, though, and very, very smooth out of the box here. Well, not out of the box, but out of, out of the box that Eric sent it to me in. So, pop this off. I'm wondering what the deal is with those pins. They almost look a little bit on the big side. Like maybe they're going to cause me problems, but hopefully they'll just pop right off. I'm going to go ahead and take the blade out of play for the moment here. Just so it's not going to attack my hands. I'm wondering if these pins are actually... No? Okay, they're just... There we go. Got that popped off. Oh, boy. Okay, so this is a point where I have to make a decision. Choices must be made. I could take this apart further. I could break it down so that, you know, I separate this liner from the backspacer. I take off the clip. Um, in order to do that, though, I'm looking at... Well, actually, wait. In order to get to the other side of the pivot, I'm going to need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go for it. This is a knife that... Uh, if I were to hurt it somehow or another, I could actually replace. So, you know, there you go. I'm gonna put my two clip screws down on the end here. I don't actually know if they're any different, but they're certainly not a bad approach. So, here we go. Leave those off to the side along with the pocket clip. And then I'll just grab these three out of the way. Come on. Pull that out. A full disassembly is always a little bit nicer, especially when you've got steel that's up against G10 or something like that. That tends to be a, a breeding ground for rust. So what I'm going to do is leave a nice thick coat of frog lube underneath the, uh, the G10 here. Come on. There we go. It's popped out. Lift this off. My backspacer's wanting to come free. This is uh, interesting. Okay. This is one of the more involved knife disassemblies that I've done in a little while here. Um, not necessarily a problem. Still seems to be well built. But there's a lot of moving parts going on here, quite literally. So um, I'm just going to start with the cleaning process here. Start off with the G10, because why not? We can see there's some kind of a yellow, gunky grease that's been used on here that's just not great. And it's left behind very strong residue. 
and then I do want to try and get off of there. Because the whole knife will run a lot smoother when using an oil that doesn't leave behind this kind of a gunk. Luckily, the alcohol is binding to whatever that grease is and removing it out of there, which is really, truly a beautiful thing. Oh, this right here is a little bit of corrosion, I believe. And that's kind of what I was warning you about. It's very easy on a knife like this uh, for water to get trapped between the G10 and the handle itself, and the, and the scale, that is, and uh, for there to start to be little bits of corrosion in there. So I'm really glad that I did actually take this guy apart, um, you know, just so I can get some corrosion protection to the other side of this thing. Put that off to the side for the moment. pop off the washer, which is really held on there with some gunk. But it's actually a testament to, I don't know, the resilience of something or another, that this was actually still pretty smooth. Uh, perceptually speaking, it still felt pretty damn smooth as I was going through and cleaning it off. So, I'm sorry, as I was using it before cleaning it out here. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of nice. It shows just how dirty something can be before it gets to be an actual honest-to-God problem. And it also shows that, frankly, I keep my knives too clean. Uh, this is something I'm well aware of. I'm kind of a perfectionist, and so I have this tendency to uh, over-clean, over-care over for things. Not a problem. It's just perhaps a little waste of time, but I enjoy it. So is time really being wasted here? I don't believe so. I'm going to go ahead and clean off the blade here. We can see that a lot of this grease has just kind of collected there, especially around this stop pin here, which is the, um, this is a stop pin that's pretty interesting. Um, where else did I see this recently? I took something else apart recently that had this same kind of approach where the stop pin is mounted to the blade and travels within an internal track. I forget, but either way, um, it was there, and it was interesting, and I commented at the time, but it's cool to see it here out of a Spyderco. Got no reason to like it or dislike it particularly. It's just nice. So there we go. That's a hell of a lot cleaner. Let's go ahead and hit this guy. Not that it needs to be super clean, but why not, right? And now, finally, I gotta clean these washers, because, oh my god, these washers need love. In the very worst of ways. There we go. And here we go. Okay, next step here is gonna be to use a um, Q-tip here and just cover it in the rubbing alcohol. Whoa, there. Another little flood there. It's okay and get up inside here because very, very easy for gunk to accumulate there and you can't just get that by wiping it. So again, get all up inside here. You can see how oh, whatever this grease is is ugly because it's got a certain little stench to it, which I can't say I'm super in love with, but that's okay. And then again, you're never really in love with something you call a stench. A stench of romance in the air. No, that doesn't work. No, actually, it means something very specific. Go ahead and do that. But anyways, as I was saying before I got hung up on the uh, the meaning of the word stench, is that um, you can see how if, if gunk gets trapped inside this little groove here, uh, it'd be very easy for the light uh, the knife not to lock up anymore. And that's, that's ugly. And so you do want to be a little bit careful with things like that. And finally, just make sure I get the inside and the outside of the washers. Make sure they're good to go. All righty. So, uh, where is my pivot? This may be my pivot. Oh no, I'm dropping pots. There we go. It's going to be a backspacer. Make sure there's that. There's that. Okay. I believe we're good to start the reassembly. 
So right here I got my frog lube CLP paste. And the frog lube paste is great for situations like this because you can apply just a lack of a lot of it to the surface here. Let's go ahead and spread it onto your finger there and then just start applying. You're not going to use too much. It's not going to gunk things up particularly. Looks pretty good. So... And this will just help to stop rust from forming. It's really good in that way, by the way. The frog lube. Is it perfect? No. But it's also food safe. It doesn't smell like heck. I can use it in the living room without the fiancé raising heck. There's a whole bunch of joy. Do it there. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and hit the inside of the clip. Hit this backspacer a little bit while I got it on the fingers. Uh, hit the blade tang a little bit. Basically, any surface that's going to be hard to do this to in the future, you want to make sure you get. And frankly, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the blade with it too, because why not, right? Okay. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is use the uh, paper towel here and wipe a little bit of it off. The um, And I'm not using a pot with the alcohol on it, but just wipe a little bit off of it on the inside that's facing the blade. Just to make sure that I'm not covering my locked face, not covering my pivot area completely in frog loop. Uh, let's see here. If this is the lock side here, yeah, then... Yeah, this would be this side. Figuring out the lock side is sometimes half the battle. Alrighty, there we go. It is now time to start the reassembly process. All right, so how the heck am I gonna do this? Um, step one is probably gonna be to put my backspacer back in here. So I'm working from the uh, um, reverse, reverse engineer in here, if you will. This goes here. This guy goes here. This guy goes here. I'm sorry, I should be doing this on camera rather than off camera. Yeah. How to listen to Nick disassemble and maintain a spider cone the locker. So I believe that's now set on this side. Oh, except for one key thing, the, um, <laughs> the liner. Hashtag not a brilliant man. Okay, I can tell that the G10 is the lock side here because it's got the cutout for the lock bar. So now let's try that again, except this time including the liner. What uh, tipped me off there is that if without the liner, there's nothing for that screw to go into. Yeah. Okay, see if I can't drop the backspacer on without losing any of these parts out the back. Alignment can be tricky sometimes. There we go. That's in. Alrighty, now let's drop in the pivot. And actually, with the pivot, I'm now going to clean the uh, frog lube off of my fingers here. Because I'm going to switch to your nano oil. I'm going to use your 10 weight. Coat the pivot here. go. Clean off that. Yeah, excellent. So we now have an assembled back side of the knife. I'm going to go ahead and, and while I'm thinking about it here, reattach the, um, the, the, redo the back screws and put the clip back on. All right, clip screws are up here. I have a lot of screws at the moment. Holy crap. Moving along. Uh, get that out of the way. Here's my 
Little tiny hint of Loctite there. Drop this guy in. Bam. Screw down. Little hint of Loctite. And again, disassembling this back half on it is not necessary. Unless you suspect there's gunk or rust back there. In which case, it's not a bad idea. I'm glad I did it here. Right now, I give myself a 1 in 4 chance that I have forgotten to do something important on this side, and I'm going to need to redo all of these screws. But you know what? In the meantime, I'm just going to pretend that that's not the case. Okay, now I need to remount the pocket clip, and the pocket clip goes a little something like this. Uh, make sure that's oiled up a little bit here, just using some frog lube on the inside there. Beautiful. Pocket clip works there. Nice, unique clip. This is a really underappreciated knife from Spyderco, I feel like, because, honestly, there's nothing really that much like it out there in the world, and certainly from Spyderco. So thanks, Spyderco. This is a weird one. I don't know it actually gave them trouble at one point in time, because they ground it like a, a buco. I don't know how to speak Finnish, but... Like the knife it was modeled after, and with the S30V, that made for a blade that was, you know, very effective as a slicing tool, and it still is, um, by the way, very effective slicer here, but um, wasn't super durable, so the high-speed, low-drag operators, you know, baton and through car doors were really injuring these blades and getting chipping and things like that, and so they had to modify the grind a little bit, put a micro bevel in there. And they took some heat for it, but I don't think they necessarily needed to. Not every knife is supposed to be a super durable sort of beast. It's just not the case. Okay, so here we go. We've got all that in there. We've got our three screws for the body of the knife on the internal. We got our three external screws. We got ourselves a blade. Okay, great. Let's take the blade. I'm going to clean off the areas where the pivot goes so I can apply a little bit of oil. Just, no. And look, a sharpening choil out of Spyderco. A little tiny dinky choil, but it does the trick, right? Drop a little bit of oil down here. There we go. And a little bit more here. Drop a little bit of oil into the detent ball hole. Sorry, guys. Still getting used to the uh, new lighting setup here. And so I'm probably doing more stuff off camera than you used to. I'm getting better, I swear. He says, convincing nobody. Okay. Rotate that around a little bit. And give it a little bit more love on this side. What am I forgetting here? The stop pin is internal, so I don't need a stop pin. These backspaces are in place. There are no holes that seem unfilled that need to be filled. That's good. Those two pop in. I managed to catch my finger in it. That's okay. I will survive. I am strong like the lion. Not like a lion at all. Now I need to insert the three screws here, here, and here. And I believe that was a T9. Yeah. I see a hint of Loctite on this screw, so I'm going to give it a hint of Loctite in return. Oh, come on now. Don't fight me, you little bugger. There we go. That's in. Leave it finger tight at the moment. So the thinnest, uh, the most shallow Torx bits ever. Uh, drivers, that is. Oh, come on. I'm now throwing screws at myself. Nineteen minutes and counting. This is a complex knife here, the Nalaka. 
Cool knife though, 100%. And it's going smoothly at 19 minutes, which is even more scary. I've had some really long disassemblies because things went off the rails. You know, I'm going to try a D8 and see if it penetrates a little better here. But I've had some disassemblies that really go off the rails, and as a result, eh, looks a little better. You, uh, you wind up going forever. Takes forever to do it, but there's just a lot of moving parts here. Okay, so now that's tightened down. This is tightened down. The pivot tightness, I'm not 100% sure what that needs to look like here. So what I'm going to do is just try and gauge, okay, that's way too tight. Loosen it up a little bit here. And the unpleasant thing is that your other scale isn't on yet, so it's not really feeling right in the hand. But holy crap, is that smooth. <laughs> wow. Not a hint of, oh, blade play, this is gorgeous. Holy crap, Spyderco. The Tai Chung factory is, whew, these guys are good. Okay, I'm going to put in the handle screws before I somehow screw up that kind of smoothness. Drop this guy in here. This is probably going to be one of those knives that I expect to just be like, eh, it's okay, I guess. Uh, but I, I'm really kind of liking it. Because it's built for slicing. It's built for actually cutting things, which is a beautiful thing. So many knives these days are not. And, uh, and with this smoothness on board, too, holy crap. Not something I want to disassemble and reassemble for a living, but it ain't so bad. And at that point, oh, holy crap. This is beautiful. Absolutely no blade play and just smooth as glass. I am blown away by this action right here. Sabenza, eat your freaking heart out. Okay. So, anyways, that's your Spyderco Nilaka. Um, that took a little while. Thank you for bearing with me here, assuming you didn't, you know, close the window 10 minutes ago. Um, interesting knife. Very interesting to take apart. Nicely constructed on the whole. And, uh, hey, Eric, thanks again for loading this guy my way and for trusting me enough to do the disassembly here. I was afraid that might not go so well, but it turned out to be a lot of fun. So, thanks. And uh, everybody else, I hope you enjoyed the video here, that you have yourself an absolutely wonderful rest of your day, and that if you get a chance, check one of these guys out. It's, it's just weird enough to be really pretty compelling. And have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.